Hello everyone, and welcome to the second part of our tutorial on making war games terrain from broken toys. Since our last video, I've done a little bit of preparatory work on the components that we looked at in part one. Beginning with the base, you'll remember this uh, CD that we're using. Very rigid, doesn't warp, it's a great surface, but it is very smooth. So I've taken some sandpaper and a file to it. You can see that it's scratched up pretty well. It's going to give us something for our glue to hold on to. Next, we wanted to put what was left of our chassis, and since I didn't like much of the middle, I basically just cut off the fenders, and this is the surviving portions of our wreck. I quickly realized, though, that these things are kind of falling down. If you turn this thing to the side, there's not really enough space for me to put the remnants of the wheels underneath it, and so this needs to be elevated, and it also needs to be supported a little bit better. So what I did was I took the go-to material for most modelers everywhere, insulation foam. This is half-inch thick insulation foam, which um, you can get at any home improvement store. And I used a hot foam cutter and an X-Acto knife to sort of chisel out where I wanted the pieces to rest on my finished piece. So we're going to begin by cementing this piece to our base. Sorry there, Private Smith to our base, and then afterwards we're going to attach all of our pieces that have been modified. So we're going to begin by putting plenty of glue. We're going to avoid the center hole, obviously, because we don't want to get glue all over our... Uh... Oh, glue's not cooperating. Well, you know it's good glue when it doesn't come out easily. All right, so we're just going to kind of do one of these. And we'll sort of cement this onto the bottom. And before I put the um, before I put the fenders on, I think I'm going to use the engine. I think you'll all remember this engine block that we were using last time. So we're just going to glue that in here. And it really doesn't matter. You can't use too much glue here. The stuff dries clear. And it's also going to form a seal for when it comes time for us to spray this. If you use a um, if you use a can of spray paint to do your priming, anything that's coming from like an aerosol sort of spray or a rattle can has a propellant that melts foam. So we're going to end up having to cover this whole thing with glue anyway in order to prevent it from melting when we prime it. There's also this strange little hole in the top, so we're just going to dab some glue in there. And I found this smaller piece that sort of fits inside of it, and so we're just going to drop that in there. And now we're going to add our fenders. So we'll turn this fellow this way, and we're just going to put glue on the inside of this and sort of on the front. Yeah, I know, I apologize for the sound effects. <laughs> and we have this set that it'll sort of sit down in here. And I think we'll do the other front fender first. And get that one put in here. We were sort of looking in the same general location. Yes, I wanted it to appear sort of smashed up and not cooperating. Uh, next, you'll remember the fastener that we had from the drywall. Well, I hammered that flat and took a pliers to it and bent it up relatively well. And that's going to serve as our hood. So we're just going to throw some glue in here. Force this down into here. Hmm. Not much care for where that's landing, so maybe we'll move it up a little bit. Since we're going to be covering the remainder of it with foam, it probably isn't going to be a very big deal if we have things not lining up exactly as planned. For this piece, I've actually recruited, I found a couple of extra pieces while we were still working, because some of the original ones I had didn't really work out for what this was shaping up to turn into. So this is just a piece of plastic from an old model. So we're just going to kind of drop that into this space. And we're going to place a 
our next fender. And then we're going to put our last fender over here. Now I see all oh, it's like our work has slid a little bit, huh? Me pushing down on it so much. So I'm gonna have to recenter that, but I'll do it when I when I get finished here. We're gonna go here. This piece will go here, and I guess we're gonna have to slide everybody back to the middle. I'm a little too overzealous, I guess. There we are. Now this is more of a look that we would want. We have all of those things covered. I really do want to put it back in that slot, I think. There. Yeah, that's more of the look that we want. Now, there are also two other new pieces that I found. The first is this firearm. I think it's supposed to be a sort of uh, submachine gun. And it came with a much larger scale toy soldier that my son had. But I found that if I cut the trigger guard off of it, it does look something like it could have been mounted on this Jeep. So we're going to put that in here as well. I'm just going to kind of glue it here and sort of lean it down into the back. And another piece that we had was a steering wheel. And this is something, don't tell my son, I stole this from his Legos. He's only got a million of these steering wheels. But I saw that we didn't really have a steering wheel either. So we're going to... Uh, going to glue that on here also. And we're just going to kind of drop that in. Now I realize that the steering wheel isn't actually mounted on anything yet, but remember we're going to put sand and gravel and such on here as well. So that will cover up the area that the steering wheel is at and then it won't look like it's not mounted on anything. You all might remember also this little cattle guard looking thing. So I think we're going to put that on here too. I'm going to move my project back a little bit. And we'll glue the bottom of this. And we're going to leave that kind of sticking out and askew. And you may also remember that Lincoln log piece. Now, I did take a Dremel to that, and I took this out. And this will work as a windshield. So I think that we may end up having to move our steering wheel a little bit in order to facilitate this. But we'll go here, and we'll leave the windshield kind of sticking up, and the steering wheel sort of left in there. And we're just going to throw some more glue on the bottom. Okay, so right now, this is very wobbly and very fiddly, and before we try to do any texturing or adding any other pieces, we're going to let this fully dry. In the meantime, though, it's already sort of shaping up to look like what we want it to look like. Looks like our soldier can take cover behind it. After this dries, we'll come back, we'll add a few more pieces, and then we'll get going on the prime. All right, our PVA glue here, or white glue, is almost completely dry. And now that all this stuff is much more stable, we're going to be able to add the wheels. <clears throat> I didn't want the wreck to look like it was sunken into the ground somewhat. And so what I did is I took a Dremel, and you can see here that I cut the bottoms off the wheels so that when I set them down onto the base, it'll look like they're sunken down into the ground. So I had cut them to different sizes depending on where they are on this wreck. So we're going to start by gluing in this area. And again, you can never have too much white glue here because we want to make sure it's all well sealed. And we're also going to be covering over the excess with uh, with sand and flock and gravel and other war gamey sorts of things. Okay, so I kind of like where that one is. And then we'll do this higher one here in the back. Okay, we're just going to get that fellow lined up there. Good. And we'll do our front one right up in here. And I guess while I'm putting the glue out, I might as well 
I'll set up our back one a little bit too. <clears throat> so our front piece will go up and under there. And our rear wheel will go right there. And I kind of like that one sort of sticking out a little bit. Okay, there were a couple of other smaller pieces that we can add now that I think will be worth looking at. Um, first of all, if we look here at the hood of the car, we can see in this area here, there's like these wide gaps. And I think I'd like to have something that looks rather like a, a frame inside the vehicle that might still be there. So we're just going to use a wire cutter and a piece of wire about maybe that long. We'll just trim these out and glue them in place right here. Then that'll make it look like we have a frame. Uh oh, a little too long. All right, trim that a little bit. Okay, let's try that again. Maybe with the needle nose because I have large fat fingers. There we go. All right, now that I have that almost where I want it, we're just going to slide it out a little bit. And we'll let that one dry. And we have a couple of other pieces too. Remember, we have this jerry can, and we're going to lay this on the ground. But you can see how it has sort of this little stud on it. That certainly won't do. It won't lay flat. So we're just going to take a file, and we're just going to run it here. And that has the added advantage of taking off some of the paint that might have been on it. And I think what we'll do is, since the jerry can was in this general vicinity, I think we're going to put the jerry can kind of on the ground about here. So we're just going to kind of let that sit. Uh, we're definitely going to want part of our exhaust. So we're going to take this out on the other side. And, oh, I don't know, maybe we'll do about this much of it. So we're just going to use the wire cutter there. It's also a sprue cutter, if necessary. And we could probably cut a little bit of this out, too. And we're just going to run a little bit of a bead of glue right through here. And we'll use the file just to kind of square off the edge of this piece of sprue. There, good. And we'll just tuck this one up into the structure of the thing. Alright, so we're going to have an exhaust pipe kind of sticking out, and we have a jerry can kind of laying on the ground. And then the last question that I had to deal with was what to do with this empty space, because you can see where the mold lines were on the inside of this thing. And that's where I decided to use this cargo cage piece. And I rather liked how it looked maybe covering this back section. I can always put some kind of foliage or something in there. So we're just going to get a small pair, these little plastic uh, snips, and we're going to look at about the height we want. Maybe we'll cut it at about here. And we're just going to snip through all of those. So now we have this little piece left here. And we're going to fill this part with glue. And we're going to fill the bottom part with glue. Sorry to block your way there. That out of the way. Tools out of the way. I'm just going to drop this right in the hole. And then when it comes time for us to add the flock and the foliage, we'll put some leafy stuff in there. And I think that'll look a little more normal. All right. So I guess we're just going to let this stuff kind of sit overnight. Oh, dear. Our... Uh, our bar is already falling out, so I have to come up with something different for that. So we're going to let this dry overnight, 
And in the morning, we're going to put the, um, you know, the ballast and the sand and all that other stuff down. So stand by. All right. Most of what we've already glued is dry. There's just a couple more finishing touches I'd like to add. One of them was that the headlights here in the front weren't very pronounced. And so my son was kind enough to give me these Lego lights at the bargain basement price of a dollar each. I think it's the highest budget item in the whole project. Uh, we super glued these on the front, though, which will be helpful when we paint it because it will give it a little more texture and a little more shape than it had before. The other place, which I think we can touch some things up, is going to be this break in the chassis right here. And this is completely accidental, but it does look like a tree could have pushed as the uh, as the chassis was rusting, the tree could have pushed that out. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue in what they call a tree armature. I mean, model railroaders are going to be very familiar with these. Um, this particular one is made by a company called Woodland Scenics, and they come out flat. They're basically plastic with wires running inside of them, and you can bend the tree into any direction that you want. And I've seen that if... I bend this tree a certain way, I can wedge the limb underneath the chassis like that. And it looks sort of like the tree is uh, forcing this chassis to break apart as it grows. So we're going to do that. Now the next thing we're going to want to do, because you can see here, we can look at this at this object, and we can see there's a lot of flat areas now, but they still look like flat areas around the CD. The way that we're going to camouflage that is by using some sand. So I'm going to go uh, get the sand ready, and I'm going to reconfigure my camera, and I'll show you guys how to do that part next. Welcome back, everyone. As you can see, most of our bits have dried pretty securely on this piece, so it's time for us to add some ground texture. We're going to do that by just gluing some sand to it. So we're beginning with uh, a little bit of this glue. You want make sure that you have an old brush and you have some water on hand. You just kind of dab some glue inside of these spaces. Being careful not to get glue anywhere you don't want sand because the immersion step that's coming up is very messy. If uh, you get sand in the wrong place, it's kind of hard to change it. So we're just going to come in here and we're going to cover all of this being very mindful of whatever space we're going to have. And we're going to get some of the dirt all up and through here and through here. Well, that worked out relatively well. And I'll probably speed this up so that you guys don't have to watch every brush stroke that I'm doing. All right. Now you can see we've painted in pretty much all the areas where we're going to want ground cover to be. And so now it's time for us to go and put this in some sand. Now the sand that I use is actually the stuff that they sell with paving stones. It's different from play sand because you can see it has these large rocks that are sort of inside and that can give us a nice irregular sort of a finish. So what we do is you dip the entire project down into the sand. 
And I even have some sand inside of this old container here. I'm going to center us a little better. And so we're just going to open this container up, and we're going to shake it out. Obviously, you want to make sure that you're not too rough with it, but you also want to pack this down fairly well. So now that we have our project mostly buried, we're just going to gently compress all around it. And there's too much sand on top of this for us to actually be moving anything inside of our, inside of our model. Now, some modelers will leave this stuff sitting even overnight and then draw it out. For me, I generally don't wait that long. I want to see if uh, there's anything where I don't want it, in case there's any unwanted sand. I want to get rid of it when it's still wet. So I'm going to remove it gently right now. And we kind of tap off the excess. And this is what we're left with, which, uh, you yeah, know, it actually looks pretty good. You'll see there's a little bit of extra sand. We're just going to use a dry toothbrush, or toothbrush, paintbrush, and we're going to get that extra sand off of there. It doesn't look like there's any extra sand on our tree. Looks like there's a little bit in here, so we're going to, we're going to scrape that out. Okay, the rest of this looks all right. It does look like up in here we're probably going to have put a little bit, or you may just you may also just leave it. It sort of depends on how it looks. Um, there's a little bit on top of here. We're going to scrape some of that away, and we'll probably put some vegetation or something in this wheel well. It's a little too deep for that. Uh, overall, though. Well, I think I like it. I think we're going to let this dry, and um, afterwards, then we're going to move on to painting it. So, this is what our project looks like right now, which is a far cry from where it started as a small plastic drawer full of garbage. So, after we after this has an opportunity to dry, we'll um, we'll paint it up and uh, we'll start base coating it.